Freedom! In the last video I saw you, I talked to you about the CPM model, and I also talked to you about how when compared to traditional media, um, such as television, it's very, very broken, and that if you were to have a pool of about, you know, two, three thousand active subscribers, you could very easily quit your day job if things were monetized the same way. Before we go any further, I need to point out this video is for people who want to make YouTube their, their career, their job. They want to do this full time. So if you're not that person and if you think that we should all only do this because we love it and you think that no one should ever make money or get upgrades or anything like that through YouTube, click here for some cat videos or cute kids or something. Imagine, if you will, a world where you wanted to view a piece of content. But between you and your content, there was this paywall where you had to pay $15 in order to be able to get to the other side to whatever content it is you wanted to view or interact with. If we apply the CPM logic there, we can take that fantasy and we can actually realize it's not fantasy, it's reality. This is what we call movie theaters. Movie theaters do this all the time. $15 to watch a movie, $10 to watch a movie. Well, a thousand people watch that movie. That is a $15,000, or no, 15, <laughs> that is a lot of CPM. And that is the traditional model for content. Um, for content consumption. Go ahead, let us know if you think your content is worth $15 per video in the comment section down below. Do you believe that it makes people's day $15 brighter? Now, depending on the length of the movie, we can assume that that movie is making roughly $125 per minute. That is a huge amount of CPM per minute. And TV, in our previous video, got like 18 or 19 dollars CPM per minute. And then we have YouTube where the CPM per minute is roughly about 50 cents. Based on the logic and the numbers, that would mean that YouTube content is roughly, what, 32 times less valuable than TV and 250 times less valuable than a movie. Have you seen YouTube content or have you generated YouTube content that you feel is on either side of this? Do you feel that YouTube content is 32 times less valuable than TV? Do you feel that it's 250 times less valuable than a movie? Let us know in the comment section down below. Honestly, I don't. As a result of all of the economics that I just explained, we've seen a huge jump in very inexpensive to produce content that can be produced in mass. So things like Let's Plays, beauty guides, tutorials, and what was the third? The third was vlogs. These three types of content thrive on this platform because they can be produced cheaply and because they can be created in mass and then scheduled for an audience. Now, of course, there are also other things such as skits, which have always been more about creativity and things like that than they ever would have been about, um, say, oh, I don't know, the actual money. Usually not a whole lot of money goes into producing these things because it's all about imagination. It's about you know, being able to express yourself in that form. And last time I checked, one of the most popular, if not the most popular YouTube uh, creator produces two of those, vlogs and let's plays. And didn't he also do something with beauty for a while? Even content that Hollywood says are dirt cheap to produce. Things like reality TV shows and game shows, things like that have had a hard time and have actually failed here on YouTube, mainly because of the economics of it. So what's this all boil down to? For someone to make this their full-time job, before they get into some crazy number of subscribers, someone has to pay. Not everybody, and not really a whole heck of a lot, but somebody does. A lot of you are probably asking, how? How does this work? 
And some of you might even be ahead of me, already typing it in the comments down below. The answer is simple. Things like Patreon, merchandise stores, things like this. All of these things will allow you to spread your brand and allow your fans to help you make this your full-time job, possibly get rid of a part-time job. So instead of a full-time and a part-time, now you've got a full-time on YouTube. That is the beauty of this. A lot of times, in order to do it, all you have to do is ask. Many live streamers are right now making an entire living off of creating content like Let's Plays and playthroughs. And that's all they're doing. They're just asking. They're asking people, hey, if you like my content, follow me, subscribe, you know, visit my Patreon down below. Never be scared to ask. Don't pester and always be make sure that you're tactful in the way that you do it. If you don't believe me, just look at the success of VGHS by Rocket Jump. Rocket Jump has pretty much bypassed entirely the CPM model for content creation. Of course, it's there because you know, it does help move things along. However, Freddie Wong has pretty much moved beyond that for all of his effects heavy things. If it's working for him, it might just work for you on a smaller level. As far as merchandising, look around. A lot of YouTubers such as Shane Dawson, Grace Helbig, they're all coming out with books for many reasons. One, it's great for self-fulfillment and two, because it's another way to monetize your content and reach a new audience. Also, I think Grumpy Cat recently came out with a book or something. All in all, the point I'm trying to make is that in an economically efficient world, things wouldn't be the way that they are. We wouldn't be making $2 roughly CPM on YouTube. It's not, and that is the average site-wide. If you want to help jumpstart your brand, you may want to look at these other things like Patreon, like merchandising. This is how you are going to help make your dreams come true of your career in video. Till next time, I'm Anthony. Like, subscribe, comments please.